Hello everybody, this is Peter here from the Lore Boys. Just letting you know that this week you will be getting the podcast that we recorded live on twitch.tv slash the Lore Boys during our 16-hour Extra Life charity stream on November 3rd. Uh, during the stream we had Trav on from the Strangerlands podcast where we discussed various races from D&D and what the differences are in their homebrew D&D setting. So uh, yeah, check us out and uh, thanks for listening. Are we recording a podcast or what? <laughs> <laughs> hey everybody, welcome to the Lore Boys Live episode. The Lore Boys Live show. If you weren't here in Twitch chat, you don't know the nightmare we just experienced. <laughs> that we have just awoken from. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm Ethan Palmer, uh, I'll be your host today. I'm joined with my co-host. James the Heck Miller. You don't have to wave for the podcasting medium. But, well, uh, you can wave we're doing it live, on. too. Don't <laughs> discourage including people. Never wave to the audience. Yeah, no. yeah. We don't igno- now we don't acknowledge Twitch chat at all. Yeah. <laughs> and also... Uh, Peter O'Donoghue. I uh, figured it out after 50 minutes to get desktop <laughs> capture. And uh, sitting through 45 minutes of technical difficulties to uh, guests appear on the show is... Uh, howdy, everyone. Uh, it's me, Trav. Uh, from the Strangerlands podcast. From the Strangerlands podcast, uh, we've had Murphy Giller on the show, who is uh, another member of the the Strangerlands, and uh, we've played one of their promos, and they've played one of ours. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. Oh, of course, of course. So, Trav, do you want to just really quickly run through what the Strangerlands is for anyone uh, who's forgotten? Yeah. So, uh, the Strangerlands podcast is a real play five E D and D podcast, and it is a very unique take on the D and D world. We uh, spent a lot of time developing our own steampunk version of this world. It's called Pylos, and uh, the story is very unique to anything we've ever heard. And what makes it incredibly unique uh, to kind of uh, segue into what we're going to be talking about is the lore behind the Stranger Land. Yeah, so in in a lot of high fantasy, your three primary races are humans, elves, and dwarves. Uh, Well, we took that concept and turned it completely on its head. Uh, So in our lore, there was a celestial war about a thousand years ago, and the gods constricted the three primary races to build these vast machines that were infused with magic, which is where our steampunk-esque lore comes from, and as a reward for assisting them in this war, they brought them up to the celestial plane to live an eternal life, so they no longer exist. Yeah, cool. It's interesting. Uh, so the the three main races that you mentioned are in Strangerlands are Drow, Dragonborn, and Tieflings? Correct. That is correct. And the player characters are Asimar, Bugbear, Tabaxi, Kobold, and there used to be a Furbolg on the show, correct? Yes, that is correct. You Perfect. can play as ASMR? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, it makes for a very interesting medium via podcast. Uh, we get some really weird reviews because of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> very relaxing. Slept like a baby. It, it, uh, it was it gives, kind of horny. It, it was, gives the meaning yeah. to, I push the orc off the cliff, you gently caress his back, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, so, the drow... For anyone listening who doesn't know what they are, I assume Peter and Jamie don't because they're fools who don't, don't know, know anything. Uh, they're dark elves, essentially. Whoa, I was way off the mark there. Uh, <laughs> I, thought the blo- I thought they were the blood drinking rat people. I was gonna guess like some sort of undead thing, but I don't okay. know. I'm fucking with you. Dritz yeah. Dwarden's a drow. Dritz Dritz Dwarden is a drow. Yeah. Yes, the most popular drow. Yeah, uh, yes. written by R. L. Stein. <laughs> <laughs> I love Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jay Kojima so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some nerd somewhere just got cancer. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Raise money to help him. Yeah. Uh, just nosebleeds uh, all over the place. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Drow, sometimes known as the ones who went below uh, in the world of Faerun and the Forgotten Realms, are the dark elves who right. populate the Underdark. Uh, the Drow worship the goddess Lolf. Sometimes known as the Queen of Spiders or the Queen of the Demon Web Pits. So <laughs> in like in um, Pylos, are the gods the same? Uh, some are. Uh, yes, there are. Some gods are the same. 
Um, there are others, especially with us player characters, where we kind of branched off. Uh, we were given some freedom to pull um, real patrons into our characters. Uh, my char- my character, for example, a uh, lizard man, uh, lizard folk rather, storm sorcerer, worships a very old Babylonian god called Adad, who is the god of storms. Hell yeah, cool. Um, and I believe um, not to get. One of the other deities that our Asimar uh, player, Colleen, uh, her character, Tash, uh, was a worshiper of Aramid, which I believe was... I don't remember if that was from D&D lore or if it was Gaelic. I know she's got a lot of Gaelic in her character, but I don't remember specifically if that god was uh, pulled from actual Gaelic religion or if it's uh, if it's from a different lore. Well, it's unfamiliar to me, so we're going to say it's from a different lore. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm the Dungeons sure. & Dragons expert, right? So <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Uh, so is Lolth a god in uh, Pylos? Yes. Uh, the drow do worship Lolth. Um, they also, much like in the D&D lore, uh, the Faerun lore, they have a hypersensitivity to sunlight. And the way they traverse during the day is is being that it's a steampunk world, technology is a little different. So they have uh, these special goggles they wear and garb that keep the sunlight off of them. Okay. okay. They're gingers. Yeah. Essentially, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they're they're the Gaelic then. It's got to be it's got to be Gaelic Gloria. Yeah. The terrible uh, sunburns. Ch- sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Lolf, the demon queen of spiders mm-hmm. or the queen of the demon web pits. Uh, is the goddess of the um, Dark Elves in Dungeons and Dragons. Okay. She's uh, an evil uh, deity. She likes to encourage infighting among her her chosen people, the drow, by claiming they need to constantly call the weak. Uh, And also because the main figure of their whole society is uh, a goddess, they're a matriarchal society. Uh, so they have like badass women. They all worship spiders, and they all kill. They have no problem with killing the weak or like letting the weak die. We've talked about this before. You've you've brought this up. So we've talked about the underdark. Yeah. And the drow live in the underdark. Right. I'm, I'm yeah. sure I mentioned them briefly uh, during, during our, our elephant episode. episode. Yeah. What's with the trope that spiders always have matriarch? Like, well, female spiders are bigger because they uh, are generally bigger. To my knowledge, yeah. car- because they have to carry the eggs, to my knowledge, female insects are larger because they do not stretch. So they need room for eggs. Oh, that's they why they shed their that's why they shed their shells because they, they don't too. stretch. Mm-hmm. Oh, there you There's go. That is my theory that may be completely wrong. So you guys, uh, I you guys think it's pretty stout. Yeah. Lore, uh, Lore Lore was canon. <laughs> Lady spiders is big because <laughs> spider shells don't stretch. And drow molt and the ladies are bigger because they need Room for egg? Right. Yeah. <laughs> thorax is, thorax is uh, one of the bits of an insect. Here. Abdomen. Uh, the thorax, I think, is the middle part. Head, thorax, abdomen. Head, thorax, sure. knees, abdomen. Sure. Lilu, Lilu says, yeah. <laughs> so, under Lolth's guidance, the drow believe in two things. Forcing all the races of the Underdark into subservience. Uh, remember, this includes Illithid. Uh and the extermination of all the other elves. So, did I don't know how much you want to spoil from Pylos, but did the drow succeed in a way? Like, um, so that remains to be uh, unknown. Uh, okay. The drow, so the drow lore in that aspect in Pylos is they are part of a, a, what's being referred to as the Decladine Empire. It's a very fragile empire that was constructed by the are three primary races, the Drow, Dragonborn, and Tieflings. Um, The Drow are indeed a very chaotic race, even in our lore. Uh, They do worship Lolth, and for that, um, I mean, ultimately you have three very chaotic races that are balancing a a spinning plate, essentially, which is all of Pylos. And as far as the extermination, uh, if they succeeded, uh, that remains left to be known. Uh, I would say yes, simply because after the Celestial War, elves were brought into the uh, astral plane for all of eternity. So, so okay. by default, the elves are going, huh, our objective is done. We got to find something else to do. Yeah. <laughs> one, one way or the other, they're gone. 
<laughs> yeah. So that's I think that's where that goes. Cool. Cool. So uh, the other members of the Dunedain. Uh, well, Declodine. Uh, Declodine. The Dunedain Declodine. is from Lord of the Rings I know, and yeah. the Rangers. I know. Thank you, Peter. So the Declodine Empire uh, is the three races, the Drow, the Dragonborn, and the Tiefling. Mm-hmm. The Dragonborn in the Forgotten Realms, uh, sometimes known as the Ashmarked Ones, were inhabitants of Abir before it merged with Toril. So obviously, Pylos, not so much to do with Abir Toril. It's not like no. an alternate Abir Toril? No. Okay. So the origin of the Dragonborns on Abir Toril is largely unknown. They're not just pony dragons. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, is their origin known or established on Pylos? Um, it has not been. So to flush this out a little bit, I am actually a player, for those yeah. of you that are listening that have not listened to our show. I, I, I We all kind of had a hand in building the world, but the explicit details are revealed to us as we go. Mm-hmm. So things I do know about Dragonborn, uh, in our world at least, is um, they do, in fact, worship a version of Bahamut that we... It started as a joke, and it's now official canon. It is Brohamut. <laughs> <laughs> Does he have a Coors Light? <laughs> uh, he, uh, I don't remember if he said it was Coors Light or Bud Light. Uh, but he does... Yeah, some, his, some shitty. <laughs> his effigy does, in fact, have a beer in hand. He's wearing the sunglasses with the slats. Uh, oh, across yeah. that. Uh, yeah. Shutter shades. <laughs> yeah, shutter shades. Uh, he's got the like the surfer look to him. So he's wearing like the crazy like beach gear, sandals, uh Shorts. and he's he's <laughs> a total fucking like party Puka, Puka Shell necklace. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Puka shell, shell necklace, yes, that's nice. totally a thing. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, uh if they if they all worship Brohamet, are metallic dragonborn the more common dragonborn? In Pylos? Um, we actually have not come across a metallic dragonborn. We've seen a lot of uh, primary colors. Uh, um, so the, the chromatic dragons worship Brohamet? Yes, yeah, they, they all they all worship Brohamet in yeah. our world. Okay, so in... Can they, you, sorry. Uh, yeah, I have a question because I'm super lost. There's metallic dragonborn? There's, that's what, yeah, uh, that's what I was just going to explain. In, yeah. in Forgotten Realms in Faerun, there's metallic dragons and chromatic dragons. Mm-hmm. Chromatic dragons are red, white, blue... Uh, you know, whatever. Yeah. Just normal colors, whereas chromatic dragons are gold, platinum, silver, uh, etc. Depends on the Pokemon game. Bronze, yeah. They're the, yeah, the, <laughs> the chromatic ones are Pokemon, the newer Pokemons, and the, chroma- the... No, sorry, the metallic ones are the new Pokemon games, and the chromatic ones are the old Pokemon games. Yeah, so you've got so, gold and silver are <laughs> metallic dragons. Yeah. I think that breaks down, though, because the metal ones are supposed to be better, right? And the old Pokemon's better. So the metal ones in uh, Dungeon Dragons are good aligned. The okay. chromatic mm-hmm. ones are evil aligned. Okay. A red dragon is an evil dragon. A uh, gold dragon, which is gold, is the counterpart to red. Is a good dragon. Is a good dragon. Okay. Bahamut is the uh, most prominent of all the dragons in the Forgotten <coughs> Realms. Uh, it is a platinum dragon worshipped by uh, like a lot of paladins will worship it because Bahamut is considered a, a lawful good oh, uh, okay. being, basically. Yeah. Pokemon platinum dragon. Yeah. Yeah. And and our, so in our lore, where that differentiate differentiates rather is. Uh, as far as good and evil, uh, races that you would inherently think to be evil um, aren't. Hmm. Prime example uh, being one of our player characters, Craig, who's a bugbear. Bugbears are inherently evil characters. But he's actually playing a very good aligned character. He's just very misunderstood. People see him, they're afraid of him, they instantly go, To prison with you! So he's Shrek. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> essentially, yeah. Very, very Shrek-y. <laughs> Craig is uh, the Shrek of Stranger Lines. There you go. More yeah. lovers canon for you. I love uh, it. That's great. He managed to uh, tie anime into D anD D. Science said it couldn't be done. Which one of you is Corey in the house? <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, so so it's a lot of with alignment. It's uh, more action based than it is racial. Uh, so in the case of the Dragonborn, uh, they are. Primarily, the Dragonborn we've met have been pretty decent fellows. They're very, they are the also the core of the law enforcement of Pylos, uh, particularly of um, oh my god, my brain just broke. <laughs> the city that that the the main city Declan. that no, that's the Empire. Oh, 
I'm drawn. <laughs> They're going to kill me. I I have to look this up real quick. The capital city. I can't city believe the capital Street city, Street. which I am totally. Wow. St- Ottawa. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, Thrace. Oh, it's Str- That's it. Thrace. Thrace. Yes, okay. that took oh. me a second. Uh, so the, the one of the capital cities, Thrace, they're actually the primary law enforcement there. The uh, uh, Dragonborn. Yeah, the Dragonborn are, yes. Cool. Uh, so it's more like, it sounds like it's less to do with uh, good, neutral, evil, and more to do with lawful, neutral, chaotic, because you mentioned the drow were chaotic. Yeah, yeah, that, it kind of aligns more that way. Um, there are some evil, don't get me wrong. Uh, but yeah, it's more. Oh, good. I was worried. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's well because the the chaotic is very much um, out for yourself. Yeah. Type which of fits the mindset. Drought. Yeah. Uh, so some theories from Faerun where the dragonborn come from, even if we don't know in Pylos. Uh they are humans or, or another race, humanoid race, twisted when exposed to the energies of the spell plague, which we talked about on the. Our first or second episode of Dungeons and Dragons? Yeah, I think it was the first one, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe they were the result of experiments of the cult of Tiamat, gone awry. So Tiamat is, uh, we've talked about her before too. She's a five-headed uh, dragon that represents five different colors of... Uh, chromatic dragons. Chromatic dragons, yeah. Right, yeah. Uh, so she's evil, and she's this five-headed thing, and they think maybe the cult of Tiamat was trying some experiment to uh, raise her or summon her, and they turned a bunch of themselves into dragonborns who could then reproduce. Azgarath, uh, lead divine among the dragons, creating the dragonborn as servants to the uh, dragons. This one seems the most likely that a god just kind of willed them into existence to serve his people. Mm-hmm. More likely than feral dragon and human orgies. Yeah. <laughs> oh, only slightly more, more likely. Only than. slightly more plausible, <laughs> created from nothing by a god. Okay, right. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad we got uh, our... our fan art, or, or art of the day, just a bunch of dragons and people fucking, because that's really... I wrote this hoping that the Stranger Lands episode, the art would feature dragons and people fucking. Oh, God. <laughs> Is that what I have to draw now? <laughs> just the, that other god, the bro dude, just like, nice. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's all, yeah. <laughs> Rahman sets it all up, yeah. He, he knows some people who are really down. He's got, like, in a puka shell kind of on his dick, too. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> like that little puka shell bracelet. Uh. P- puka shell... Cockering. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, we got a nice yeah. from chat. <laughs> Thank you, chat. Uh, and the last theory: in a battle between the dragons and the gods, Asgaroth was killed, and the dragonborn simply sprang into existence from his blood. Uh, not to be confused with the dragon, the dragonborn of Bahamut, which are non-draconic humanoids who had pledged their devotion to Bah Bahamut to be reborn with draconic features. So there are. Like dragon kin, which were humanoid people who Bahamut did specifically turn into uh, essentially dragonborn, but those aren't the dragonborn that we're talking okay. about. So the third race uh, that that lives in Thrace. Wait, it's ASMR. No, not yet. No, damn no. it. <laughs> <laughs> this, is what, this is what you get for reading ahead in my notes. <laughs> that says tiefling. Yeah, so Peter, Peter got it. Uh, he didn't whisper it into the mic, but it is tiefling. I know there is a tiefling in Neverwinter Nights 2. I played that game for a couple hours, and she is insufferable, and then I uninstalled it. Okay. <laughs> I think it's a pretty general consensus across the board. <laughs> that tieflings are insufferable? Or that yes. you should uninstall Neverwinter Nights 2? Uh, both. Okay. <laughs> so tiefl- tieflings are very uh, edgelord uh, as far as D&D goes. Even for D&D, they're pretty edgelord. Mm-hmm. Sorry, uh, somebody in chat just said, if James does ASMR again, they're going to leave. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fair. I think we all agree with that, right? I'd say so. Uh, I'm kicking him out and keeping his dog. Uh, <laughs> so tieflings are humans touched by demonic influence, usually from having grown up on demonic planes or from having a parent who fucked demons. Okay, so this is where I get my orgies. Yeah, this is yeah. If you want to do demon orgies, I think it's kind of boring. I think dragon orgies is better, but yeah, demon orgies have been done. <laughs> yeah, demon yeah. orgies been done. done to death. Done man. to death, right? Yes. Uh, different strokes. <laughs> <laughs> Create different folks. Couple. Of- <laughs> 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 yes, <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> so I as- remember that painter that draws all those actual like satanic orgies. Michelangelo. No. Uh, da Vinci. Nope. Uh, Banksy, pa- Picasso. No, nope, it's not Banksy. Banksy. Uh, yeah. Banksy and all his black and white demon orgies. <laughs> it's like if, you, if, if you look at that guy throwing the Molotov sideways, it's actually just a bunch of devils fucking. Yeah, <laughs> that's why he's so popular. I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah. Uh, 
So as the combination of two distinct species, uh, tiefling culture is kind of undefined because they kind of just come. Mm. A, a lot of tieflings will just kind of turn up sometimes as a result oh. of their dad fucking a demon. It popped into my head. I was going to Google it. Sorry. It's Hieronymus Bosch. Okay, cool. That's the artist. Uh, tieflings do, however, fall into the two stereotypes of being obsessively curious, obsessively curious about their demo- demonic heritage and being repulsed by their demonic heritage. Mm-hmm. So this is kind of where the edgelord thing comes in. They're always like, I'm going to be an evil guy that's going to embrace my demonic roots or, oh, I'm going to, I'm, I'm rejecting my evil roots. I'm not like that, dad. Okay. Uh, I'm going to, oh. I'm going to grow up to be a painter who paints demonic orgies, not participates in them. He's going to grow I up to love be to play play this sec- Yeah. <laughs> I would love to play the second one. That sounds like so much fun. <laughs> uh, so what are tieflings like in Pylos? So that is a very interesting question because uh, – so what we know of tieflings is actually very little. Okay. Uh, you did tell it, me they were one of the three main races. So I, I Yes, they're one of the now. three main races. Uh, <laughs> but they are – so each race uh, is, has a different role in maintaining Pylos. Um, whereas the and they also govern themselves in a separate fashion. So whereas the Drow are hierarchical, they have houses, just like in um, Faerun. Like me, like a people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So um, a hierarchical structure for those who uh, for the uninitiated is essentially you have like a family house and they're competing for rank. Um, so there's a lot of there's you know infighting and and things of that nature. Um, subterfuge, all sorts of things. The, like, noble houses vying for yeah, power? Exactly. Yes, so it, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. The, the drow, I guess, they would have stolen a lot of that for Morrowind, because the Morrowind has a lot of great houses as well for the Dark Elves. Yeah. Yes, thing. yes. Uh, the Dragonborn are, um, I believe, uh, if I'm correct, they are a patriarchy where they have a single, like, king. <laughs> they, Daddy got, they got Daddy Dragon for yeah. the dragon orgies. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, a single ruler, um, and the tieflings operate via a council. Uh, there's uh, three named tieflings that um, are actually in our introduction in the very first episode. A good friend of ours, uh, actress in Ohio, whose Twitter handle escapes me at this moment, uh, actually uh, read a monologue we wrote and did a phenomenal job of it. And it kind of explains a little bit of that. But uh, they operate as a council. And they're also... Um, they're very secretive they're not they're a primary race but they're not very public um we did not encounter very many of them in thrace uh actually we didn't encounter any at all in thrace um and a little backstory to us we actually played in this world for about three or four months before we released our first episode okay oh, okay um, and at the time uh we had another tiefling in our party who was where we started off in Sentinel, which is this backwater town, was an oddity. It was very rare. Okay. So they're a primary race, but they're very, um, like elves, they're very secretive. Okay, they keep to themselves. Yeah. Cool. So uh, in in Faerun, because of their demonic heritage, they're generally feared and distrusted. Uh, They don't really have a homeland, as they were the progeny of humans and demons. So I guess if they're super secretive, they're kind of distrusted in Pylos as well. They never have a homeland, so they're always in stranger lands? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do believe they... I, I'm positive that they do have a homeland. We just don't know where that is. Okay. <laughs> At time of writing. Yeah. Sort of thing, yeah. So uh, the first of the, the player characters we're going to talk about is the one that Jamie gets all hot and bothered for. Oh, yeah. The ASMR. Awesome. In in Faerun, they are a human-based, plane-touched, not dissimilar from tieflings, just rather than being touched by a demonic plane, they're touched by a divine plane. They are often, but not always, descended from angels or other creatures of pure good alignment. Uh, so, in this is probably... Uh, ASMR are probably some of my favorite lore in both D&D and the story we created. So in our story, Asimar... So there was a Celestial War a thousand years ago, right? Asimar were essentially on the losing side of that war. So they are... They're still like fallen angels, essentially, but they were abandoned. And so because they were on the losing side, they are outcasts of society. People look down on them like dirt. 
Okay. Look at this dumb being of pure light. Yeah. Uh, and and they also well, it's they look down on it like dirt, and some people still view them as enemies. You know, even though this war was a thousand years ago, a lot of military, a lot of enforcement in Pilus view Asimar as dangerous okay. because of what they were capable of during the war. Yeah, you you mentioned that it was a divine with all the the main races or the the traditional main races being exiled to uh, the astral sea. Um, I guess the ASMR mm-hmm. would have been the ones fighting to keep them there on on Pylos. They were so <clears throat> in this war. It was the races were divided. Um, this was this was an inc- it, there was a war between the gods and the gods conscripted the mortal races to help them. Is essentially what had happened, and uh, humans, elves, and dwarves were on the winning side. Everyone else was on the losing side. Okay. Um. And so, as that war progressed, um, the, the those that are the Asimar are basically the ones that were on. There were the creatures that were on the losing side. That were part of so we incorporated um, angels, archangels, and everything else into this. There's a lot of um, I can't think of the word I'm looking for, but a lot of uh, spiritual stuff like that going on as well. Okay. So Asimar and our lore are essentially angels that were on the losing side, and so their gods abandoned them and left them on the mortal realm. Oh shit! Oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> left, left behind by their generals. Yeah, pretty much. They were, they were went. You failed. Uh, you can stay here. This. The way we're taking it, we don't know if that's a hundred percent the case. Um, the only person who really knows that is Colleen, and she's very good at not revealing things. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that's your DM or your lore master? Yeah, uh, that is that is our player, our, our Asimar cleric player. Uh, okay, Colleen, she plays Tash. Okay. Uh, so exceptionally rare throughout Toral, Asimar have no true societies. Uh, very few Asimar had siblings who were all also Asimar, in large part due to the rarity mm-hmm. of a celestial or god boning down with a human. Mm-hmm. They're like a bunch of little Jesus. Yeah, exactly. Okay. They're they're oh. little Jesuses, and uh, Jesuses are rare. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, another thing about them, uh, Asimar and our lore, is they are actually spoken into existence. Uh, they were the gods spoke them into existence to serve a purpose, which was to fight that war. Okay, cool. So they could just speak them out rather than leaving them there. <laughs> so well, well <laughs> gods so are have an ending sometimes. quotation mark. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but so uh, the Asimar and our lore, uh, their physical appearance, they have these designs all over their body, these ringlets all over their body, and it's actually their name, and their name is a very long title, and it's everything they stand for essentially. Um. But depending on their actions, that name can change. Okay. And the more their name changes, the further they become from the deity that they pledged to after they were left here. Hmm. So they were left here, and they pledged to different deities. They just, they picked a new one. And said maybe maybe this guy will bring me home. Yeah. Uh, so um, Tash's character is actually an elf. Okay. Uh. Uh. Who. Um, Became an I was spoken into existence as an Asimar, and uh, her deity, um, they lost. She was stuck in the mortal realm, and throughout the course of the story, uh, the, the actions and the choices she's made uh, have been um, causing changes in her, and has been, oh, without giving away too much, changing her name. Okay, okay. so Tasha's so, going through puberty. And uh, there essentially, was no yeah. Down between gods and <laughs> and people. Essentially, yeah. <laughs> so Tash's name is now changing, and because of that, uh, there is some really good story points that are happening, and it, as well as lore points that are happening. Um, and we're discovering that Asimars may not be as tied to their deities as we thought. Okay. Very cool. Um, yeah, they also don't have siblings uh, in Faerun. Uh, due to the fact that Asmar, that spring from ancient bloodlines, long left dormant, were even rarer. So it is possible that, uh, or, or Asmar in, in Faerun, if they die, a hundred year, years later they reincarnate, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and and you can kind of have these ancient bloodlines that don't reincarnate after 100 years and and they just like kind of pop into existence i feel like that's really one of those those things that it's like hey you want to make any character in dungeon dragons you want you could just be like yeah well i'm a i'm a long extinct race of of deva that's been sitting dormant kind of thing yeah uh, the first ASMR were created from slaves when they prayed to their gods for help. The gods created their bodies, resulting in the first Deva. So, it's kind of a... I guess, I guess the initial ones were first spoken into existence in Faerun. Mm-hmm. Um, and then since then, there's there's a couple other ways that they can they can do it. I don't know if an ASMR itself can, can uh, hook up with a, a human and make a new ASMR. But uh, it doesn't seem likely. Yeah, I'm not sure about that either on our end, but that hasn't really been uh, explored. <laughs> so, uh, bugbears would be the uh, next race we'll talk about. The uh, apparently evil Krog, or Shrek. Uh, uh, yeah. Bugbears are tall, hairy goblinoids, uh, which seems kind of counterintuitive, or oxymoronical. Many scholars of the late 14th century DR believe that bugbears and goblins were both bred by the hobgoblins as slave races, with bugbears serving as elite soldiers. I have a, a question. Yep. What's a DR? Uh, I talked about this uh, last time on, on we did a Dungeons & Dragons episode, which I don't think you were there for. I think it was just me and Peter. Sure. But it's a Dale Reckoning. Uh, and it was basically the first time the elves uh, allowed the humans to, like, gave them their permission to actually build cities in their forests. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was led by a man named Dale, uh, a last name Dale. And uh, this date, the, like, zero DR marks that date. Okay. So it's like, it's a timekeeping system. And this is 14th centuries or in the 14th century after uh, humans were first allowed to live in the wilds of the elves. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. So... Bugbears, like other goblinoids, have a reputation for being dimwitted and brutish. Uh, mm. It sounds like Crag or Shrek it defies that stereotype. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. <laughs> we're, we're just, uh, as this is a live episode, we've got some, uh, some memes coming in through the chat. If only you had the 3.5 edition book of erotic fantasy book for the crossbreeding chart. Oh, hell yeah. And dude. then a bunch of heart emojis. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, honestly, if only. Honestly, if you have that and want to mail it to me, please. We'll do an episode. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do an entire episode on crossbreeding. Uh, I, I just want to do research. I yeah. Mean. <laughs> <laughs> That's get to do back end stuff, if you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Uh, kind of research. <laughs> so, uh, what kind of crossbreeding is Craig into? Um, so, uh, funny you should ask that, actually. Uh, we just. <laughs> We just recorded last... Um, it is November 3rd. Uh, we just recorded last night. And uh, there was a major um, uh, progression in some shipping going on in our show with Craig. Ooh. Uh, yeah. It, it, got, it, was, it was really good. Um, but Craig himself is an anomaly. He is a bugbearer. By appearance only. Uh, he is... Uh, he plays a bugbear... This is really interesting. A bugbear druid, of all things. Okay. So, bugbears are known for being goblinoids, these vicious, violent creatures. Big, uh, bulky, hairy, yeah. ugly. Yeah. Uh, Chewbacca on steroids, essentially, yeah. okay. is what they look like. Oh. But the pecs poke through the fur a little bit, so you can uh, see the skin underneath. <laughs> Yes, yes, like exactly. <laughs> they're big. They're Bigfoots. I yeah, they're they're Bigfoots exactly. Okay, I don't know these at all. I always pictured like a four foot bear with like ladybug wings on his uh-huh. back. <laughs> like, really. So a lot of people think that, but for whatever reason, a bug bear has like a small beak. They're cool. Um, sure. Yeah. Nice, nice. Like a ladybug. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they have beaks or not. You all, you guys all agree with me, and I'm I'm happy with that. But. So I mean, I'm rolling with it. Make it make it sound good. I mean, uh, I don't think uh, we'll ever know. Really. Do bugs have beaks? <laughs> we'll never know. Uh, but uh, he so as I seen, he's he's an anomaly. Um, he his backstory is very unique. Um, what we do know about him is that he was um, admonished. He try he used to be um, a slave to a village. And they would only let him out when they needed him to kill something. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, he was—he was basically their their pet goon. Uh, and hired goons. 
Oh, not even hired. No, not hired. Pet. There's a difference. <laughs> Pet goons. <laughs> oh, Twister um, Rooney here. Uh, assuming the uh, Asmar are celestial, they can be crossbred with humans and most other races. Oh, wow. Thank you, chat, for the sexy update. <laughs> There you go. Page 51 of the PDF that was just dropped in chat. For for those of you listening live. (laughs) Uh, So, uh, yeah, so he was was kept as a, a, basically a slave pet to kill things for this village and to, quote, protect them. Um, And his whole thing, like, he wants to help as many people as he can. He wants to prove to the world that not just because a race is inherently evil doesn't mean it's evil. Which is very, very ironic because we are currently dealing with a situation with the drow that tests that very fundamental. That all drow are evil? Yeah. You guys so, are searching for your drits, basically? Um, so the story, the storyline is we are searching for a long-forgotten um, long-forgotten artifacts that supposedly wields some sort of phenomenal power and was the reason the war started in the first place. Okay. Oh, cool. Do you know the names of those artifacts? Um, I do, but I would spoil things if I said to them. Okay. Very good. <laughs> uh, so bugbears are... The spoiler boys here. Usually found in the com- company of other goblinoids, particularly goblins, since tribes, tribes made up of hobgoblins and bugbears tended to be wiped out quickly by other races of precaution. So hobgoblins are kind of smarter, bigger goblins, like mm-hmm. your, your traditional goblin. Yeah. And they, they apparently bred bugbears uh, and, and normal goblins for their own means. Uh, so you have like smart hobgoblins plus, plus the big, ugly, uh, mean bugbears. Okay. And those are like wiped out because they're like, th- these are too dangerous. You can usually leave a, tr- a goblin tribe because they're just annoying more than anything. Yeah. Uh, but hobgoblins and bugbears are considered too dangerous. Mm. So tabaxi, uh, every furry's favorite race. Uh, these are cat people. Oh, yep. Lord. Or, <laughs> yep. or jaguar people. Uh, they're a race of feline. Humanoids native to the jungles of Mastika. Uh, in general, Tabaxi do not care for wealth, unlike Meowth from Pokemon. Yep. Uh, but they have uh, an almost obsessive interest in ancient artifacts, relics, and magic items. Uh, but not for the items themselves, as much as the stories and secrets they hold. We got some. We got some furry lovers in chat right now. We got a cat, all caps. Yeah, and a purple chat is there. just blowing up with yeah. furry love. Yeah. Oh Christ! Cut the stream. Yeah. Shut it down. Shut it down. <laughs> Extra life was a mistake. <laughs> Uh, so I, t- the Tabaxi is one of the characters I play. Uh, his oh, name is Silver. You're the cat boy. Oh. <laughs> I am the cat okay. boy. Uh, his name is uh, Silverpaw. Tabaxi in uh, the realm of Pylos, uh, particularly Thrace, are um, liaisons between the three empires. Okay. Um, Just like furries and- in real life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> furries are the glue that holds society together. <laughs> <laughs> they uh and they're used kind of um in a sense that you know when there needs to be dealings done with uh folk of a lesser pedigree than what higher ups would want to be seen with they employ tabaxi they're very good diplomats uh to carry out these tasks please shake hands with this poor person for me yeah. <laughs> uh, exactly um so my particular <laughs> character Don't don't uh, touch me, just pet my cat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell this poor man that I greatly appreciate his assistance. I I can hear you. <laughs> he appreciates your assistance. <laughs> <laughs> so my uh, my particular character is um deals with a lot of the slummier crowd uh for the different empires. Um he has quite a rich backstory um, where he wound up being betrayed. Um, and part of his betrayal is he was caught for a crime he did not commit. So my Tabaxi was, um, had some sticky paws. Okay. Uh, he, he likes the shiny artifacts, right? He likes shiny things. Mm-hmm. And he would deal more with like thieves and rogues of that nature as a liaison between the governing governing bodies and these folk. So part of that is you have to know how to run with that crowd. Mm-hmm. He's uh, not a cover so cop. Um, hey, no, if you're no, an arc, you got to tell me. <laughs> yeah. 
He's not an undercover cop because he's not out trying to arrest anyone. Are you an arc, he just <laughs> He's just really good at his job. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, he... Sounds like what a snitch would say. <laughs> so here's so here's the thing. He actually, like, he enjoys thieving. Okay. So as he got further into this role he played for the governing bodies, he realized he really enjoyed this, and he wanted to become, like, the best thief in the world if he could. Okay. He, he got pretty good at it. <laughs> um, so he wound up uh, getting caught for a crime he didn't commit, and uh, they let him free, but not before extracting his claws. Oh. Ouch. Don't do yeah. that. It's inhumane. Yeah. yeah. Just uh, put... So <laughs> they Did literally... you scratch up the couch? Yeah. No, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> He was uh, he was literally declawed, and um, then somewhat. Now this I'm going to be very vague about this because the first season is very heavily uh, my character's arc. So there's a lot of things that I have to be careful on what I say here. Okay, but um, someone else uh, took him in, gave him a new set of claws, and it's actually gearwork claws hence, in his hence hands. his name. Uh, so his name so, uh, it was actually his birth name. Oh wow! His name Just is actually a happy, his... happy little accident. Yeah. <laughs> um, Are these gold? Yeah, it's a self. <laughs> Damn it! Yeah. It's a self fulfilling process. Yeah. <laughs> you call your kid Damon, it'll grow up to be a demon. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. exactly. Uh, but yeah, so he's given these claws and a uh, and a monocle that was grafted into his eye because uh, he was wounded as well. Uh, that helps him see when he's picking locks and stuff like that. Um, but he wound up falling in with another one of the impl- governing bodies and uh, it sent him on a downward spiral where he eventually found everyone else uh, and um, through that th- th- he was actually found in Sentinel in the stockades okay uh, he was he got caught while working uh, and there was a sandstorm coming and and the rest of the party had seen this poor cat in the stockades with the stand- sandstorm going, knowing it would kill him. So they freed him. And that's. Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, hey, people I can use. So we kind of tagged along for a, <laughs> for a while after that. It's a great song. Um, it, it, they imp- it imprint, or Silver Pot imprinted on them. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, and uh, so, yeah, so, so they are very. Tabaxi are very slick, they're very quick talkers. Um, because of the the positions they hold, yeah, and they they have a pretty general working knowledge of the world. Uh, so the next race uh, in line would be the uh, kobolds. They're small, aggressive, dragonic creatures known for their uh, aggression. And I never thought they were rat boys. I thought they were little rat boys. No, that's like uh, rat folk in D anD D or Skaven yeah. in Warhammer. Yeah, yeah. I thought kobolds were rat people. No, from they're World of Warcraft. They're tiny. They're they're like the size of rat people, but they're dragon, like draconic. The dragon. They have scales. They got the you know the dragon beak. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When everything. you say it's the size of rat people, that doesn't give me a lot of context. <laughs> uh, like, uh, so they're three, about three, four, three feet three, tall. Three, four feet tall. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, Think about real rat people and just compare it to the <laughs> idiot. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> just got, go back to your house. Check on your rat boy. <laughs> yeah. Measure them. Yeah, like go check the marks in your kitchen, like on the door. How tall he got? How tall he's getting you now? Yeah, just where he nibbled to over the years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All the flakes of paint are taken off. Check your shins. How high do the bite marks go? Uh, so kobolds are resentful of their short stature. Uh, they uh, they're hated by members of other races who poke fun at them for this. Uh, so you know your your uh, Edric Edric from Full Metal Alchemist. Don't call him Runt. Uh, it was an anime, just so you guys know. Right. Oh, that's that's a great, um, great reference, by the way. That's, main, <laughs> that's the main guy, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Edward Elric. That's it. So, uh, kobolds uh, hold a hatred for nearly all other humanoid races and enjoy killing and torturing them. But they, in particular, hate brownies, gnomes, pixies, and sprites. And I realize how bad it sounds to say bra- they hate brownies. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, <laughs> I'm going to need some clarification on that first one, please. <laughs> uh they're like these. They're, they're like cousins of halflings, which are uh, hobbits. Yeah. And they're like these these small little hobbit like creatures, basically yeah. okay. made with sugar, flour, water, and chocolate. Yeah, I think, and, no, I think there's an egg in there. An egg, egg whites. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> egg white brownies. What is wrong with you? 
yo man it's low fat <laughs> <laughs> or low cholesterol oh yeah uh, so kobolds are respectful of authority figures, despite uh, being evil, uh, in particular when that figure is lawful evil. So lawf- okay. lawful evil is, uh, we've talked about this a bit before, is like devils. They are like, you yeah. know, sign this contract and we'll steal your soul. If you're going to beat your kids, do it with oranges in a tube sock so it doesn't leave bruises. Yeah, exactly. That's lawful evil right for them. Whereas like demons, like tieflings would be yeah. chaotic. Or... Hit your buddy with a phone mm-hmm. book. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. That's the law, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you start, you start... With what you know. Yeah. And then you just build the rest of the alignment chart from there, right? Boom. Oh, right. my God. <laughs> Got <There> it. You. <laughs> so, uh, what are kobolds like in Pylos? Uh, cool. Again, this is the other character that I actually play. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, kobolds are, they are very angry little creatures. Mm-hmm. That is not wrong. Um, that is one similarity. Um, they are... So uh, they're they're. I don't know if they're inherently evil necessarily. Um, I know that they're not very good either. Uh, they are at ends with the lizard folk quite a bit. Um, actually, wait, no, hold on. I take that back. I do know for a fact. Uh, kobolds generally are pretty terrible creatures. Okay. Um, uh, I just happened enough. to remember a thing we did when we were playing before we started recording. Uh, yeah, no, uh, kobolds are... Uh, oh, yeah, I hit that kid with that phone book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the tube suck no. phone books. <laughs> we, we, we had an adventure we had to take, we had to deal with some kobolds, and they actually are pretty terrible little creatures, I just happen to remember. Okay. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, no, uh, kobolds are evil in our lore as well. Um, there are exceptions, as with any race. Um, and kobolds are also, they're very Aztecian in our world, uh, okay. it's, uh, to cool. kind of compare it to something more real life. Um, so like particular... the lizard men from Warhammer, which is like yes, a... yeah, yes, exactly. That is a great comparison. Just like the lizard men for Warhammer, um, they my particular character, uh, Scritch Scratch, is his name. Cute. Uh, <laughs> he, he he is uh, a storm sorcerer, and he, is that lightning or rain? Uh, uh, lightning. Yeah, lightning. Okay. Or sand this is, is a big thing. Like sand. Oh, sand. Is it is it Darude? Yeah, he's, sorcerer. Yeah, <laughs> he's at the sandstorm oh, after silver buff. Yeah. <laughs> lawful evil. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, that was that comment was lawful evil. How how dare you bring up Darude? <laughs> that, should be de- that should be dead. Uh, but uh, but yeah, so they're um, my particular character is uh, so they're not very intelligent to begin with. Uh, so let's set the bar low as it is. Good. Okay. And then let's bring it down about four more pegs, and that's about how dumb I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Clip that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so that being said, he uh, kobolds are very um, – they're very evil even to their own kind. Uh, Scritch Scratch was sent on a, quote, ep- journey – uh, because the quote gods demanded it uh, to seek out some sort of great cat hero. Okay. Um, it's it's a it was a total farce. Yeah, it seems it, painfully vague. There are no <laughs> yeah. cat heroes. Yeah, <laughs> but he was like, but he was like, he was like, oh, I I can I can be a hero. I'm gonna go do this. So the the reason why they kicked him out is because he was probably one of the worst priests they've ever had. Okay. Um, seems fair. Yeah, uh, and uh, so he winds up like, and that's a common thing, you know. They they call out the weak. Uh, they're very, um, very much only the strongest will survive. I do want to just uh, get to chat here because I was thinking this is the plot to Invader Zim, but Lilu got it in chat first. <laughs> the, the the Almighty Tallest kick out Zim because he's a fucking idiot. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, I never realized that, but yeah, you were spot on. <laughs> yeah. Spot on. Uh, there's no original stories anymore. <laughs> no, there isn't. No. There really isn't. But, um, so he uh, winds up uh, following this caravan that had our heroes in it through the desert and <laughs> eventually gets caught uh, and has recently wound up um, pairing up with them. And it's funny you bring up the pet thing because uh, the rest of the group constantly refers to him as a pet and i'm pretty sure it's gonna give him a heart attack before anything actually kills him <laughs> <laughs> so he doesn't like being a pet even though he might uh, respect authority figures 
And you, you're saying, so he's, he's good. He wants to be a hero. Uh, yeah, he, he wants to be a hero. He is good. He, um, he blindly follows his deity, um, and, uh, to the point of ignorance, uh, which okay. is, which is very common in lizard, in lizard folk culture. You know, they, they, because of that lower intelligence, they, they blindly follow beliefs to the point of ignorance. Yeah. It's what I do with Peter. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. I'll do I, anything Ethan that. tells me. Oh, I, I was met the opposite, but okay. Oh, we have such high standards <laughs> for each we're just, other. We're just following each other <laughs> around. <laughs> it's the dumb leading the dumb. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we just keep going in fucking circles. Yeah. Nothing uh, ever gets better. Uh, so the last race I took notes on, I, I, don't, I don't know if you want to get into this because I know John's left the show, but I do have notes on, on Furbolg. Oh no, we can absolutely talk about Furbog. I mean, it's okay. it's a very very important part of the story, and you know he's he was a huge part of uh, a lot of the arc. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, there was a Furbog named ba- uh, Bagger. In, yeah, Bagger uh, on the show. Uh, he played a, a a friendly guy, from what I saw. Yeah, uh, yeah. He was a race. Uh, Furbogs are a race of giant kin who prefer to avoid contact with other sentient races. Uh, they enjoy a quiet time in the woods in harmony with nature. The forts are considered sacred to them and symbolize the heart and of the earth and the adaptability of life. They saw themselves as the forest caretakers. They're basically like Scottish Highlanders. Like they wear a lot of plaid okay, and they kind of cool. keep to themselves in the rocky hills and forests. Yeah. Uh, they have a family centered clan based society uh, and they rejected the ordning, uh, customary social order among giants and giant kin. Uh, and preferred to exercise free will by using a system called the code. So, they're they're Highlanders who just have a code and then clan. Code. The, yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. mm-hmm. yeah. So, Furbogs in uh, Pylos and in the Stranger Lands, uh, very 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 similar. Um, okay. we, we did not deviate too much from the uh, standard lore in that uh, for their overall race. Um, for in Bagger's instance, so uh, Furbog are typically keep away from civilization. As you noted, uh, same with ours, and uh, they are very hostile towards civilization. They're not—they're not outright like they're not going to raid like Vikings, uh, okay. But they're not very—they don't welcome or accept Outlanders readily, bring, if at all. Don't bring your town here. Yeah, um, and they will. And if you try and establish on their land, they will force you off of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but Bagger was different. Uh, Bagger was raised, was kind of looked at as an outcast by his father, who was the leader of their tribe. And uh, the reason he was looked at as an outcast is because he, unlike other furbogs, wanted to see the world. He wanted to see what was out there. He wanted to experience civilization. Okay, he's like Ariel. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, a little bit, a okay, little bit. Nice. Yeah, you know, he, he walked into the woods one day. There was this giant, oct- like, half-octopus lady who <laughs> promised him legs. And... <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> or see the carpet from Aladdin in that case. <laughs> uh, but uh, carpet, sure, why not? Uh, but he, uh, <laughs> he, so yeah, so he wanted to see civilization. and But he wanted to be, he wanted to be a good, a great leader like his father. But he kind of understood that he had to find his own way and do it in his own way. Okay. Um, and his grandfather was one that he really looked up to and always encouraged him to follow his own mind and to um, not let his father's discouragement let him get him down and everything else. So he sets out and winds up in this dusty backwater town called Sentinel. Um, people have never seen a furbog before. They, they don't know what this thing is. <laughs> So it in a world t- full of monsters, this is a monster. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, 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 yeah. In a world full of monsters, this is a monster to them. It, One of the big gelatinous cubes is like tending bar, and he's yeah. like, "Oh God, no! <laughs> yeah. what, what the hell is that?" Thing? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so he, he and so he walks into town. It's like, "Hey, everyone, how you doing?" Like, no ill intent or anything else, and everyone else is going, "Ah!" Like, <laughs> quickly, cat boy, be horrified for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so. uh so yeah, so he winds up in this town, and eventually the townsfolk kind of get used to him, and he uh, winds up working at the blacksmith there. And uh, he uh, becomes a blacksmith, um, obtains his hammer called Black Betty, uh, blah, 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 blam. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> blam, uh, blam. 
<laughs> yeah, uh, I've heard song. <laughs> uh, another running joke in our show. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so and he winds up establishing himself in this civilization, and he um, later winds up so part of. Uh, so Furbogs are primarily like barbarians and very much frontiersmen. So part of that is they're very tribal-esque and they believe in ancestry and heritage and um, kind of a Native American type thing where, you know, spirits and things like that. Um, and uh, so he winds up having these visions of his grandfather uh, in his most dire moments of need that helps spur him on. And it's it's a really it, it's a really fantastic. I think a very real way to represent such a uh, fantastical race. Uh, cool. Yeah, that that sounds. Uh, what do I look like? They're big ass Scotsmen, I guess. You yeah, but tall. Uh, Rex <laughs> himself is blue. Yeah, they yeah. they have like gr- like pale to gray to very light blue skin oh. in Faerun. I was just imagining mm-hmm. the Scottish flag just over and over and over again, just well, like sequenced down their bodies. They typically <laughs> have uh, red hair, uh, sometimes like brown or blonde hair, but uh, typically red, and they do like the, the big beards. And everything. Yeah, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Just a big ginger walked into town. Everyone freaked <laughs> out. <laughs> <laughs> well, they have oh, no it's souls. Horrible! <laughs> yeah. So they're just puking on the ground. And... <laughs> well, I mean, they have no souls. What do you expect? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, like, a, a bunch of guys dive over the bar into the gelatinous cube. Yeah. It's like, just <laughs> 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 uh, uh, if you have any ideas for good artwork, by the way, for this episode, please feel free to let us know. But I very much, well, uh, yeah. I like that one. I like, I like a ginger yeah. guy waving and then a guy diving into a gelatinous cube. Yeah, like dissolving on the way in. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, that's uh, all the races of Pylos. Fitzy says tall gnomes. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, tall gnomes. Yeah, the that's... world's tallest gnome! <laughs> <laughs> but an average guy. <laughs> Me. Uh, and they are giant kin for a bulk, but they're not... Particularly Giant giants, tall, right? Yeah. Okay. They're like six to seven foot tall. Okay. So they're they're biggins, but not like freaky biggins. Yeah, exactly. Okay. okay. Yeah. And, and there's uh, there's plenty of other races too. That's just the main ones. Like we have um we have our own version of Uber. It's called Goober. It's run by goblins. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that's a thing that uh, exists. Yeah. So those were the three main races plus the the PC races, not mm-hmm. politically correct, but player character races. How do you uh, call a goober exactly? Is it magic? Do you have a crystal that... So, funny you should ask. <laughs> we actually have something in our world also um, called the Ethereal Network, or Ethernet Cool, we're out of short. time. Thanks, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it is steampunk, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, 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 I forgot about that yeah. for a second. <laughs> not, not high fantasy. Uh, yeah, we, we have a thing called the Ethereal Network, or Ethernet for short. Oh, <laughs> yeah. love it. Yeah, uh, so that's how we communicate using ethergrams and things of that nature. Mm. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, anything? Anything else cool in in Strange Lands? More puns, please. <laughs> um, there are plenty of puns. We we have a lot of fun with it. Um, we try not to take ourselves too seriously. Um, but yeah, there's uh a lot of really rich backstory. Um, there is. Oh man, try not to spoil too much. It takes, it takes steampunk fantasy in a direction it's never gone before we uh this world that we're building and creating we've actually already had people asking us if we're going to put out a source book and while we'd love to right now the time just isn't there yeah (laughs) yeah that's a lot of work it is it absolutely is but it's you know the more we play in it and the more it grows like i realistically can see having a full-fledged source book for this thing it would be absolutely incredible well that would be awesome we'll play it on stream next year next life so you better have it out in a year yeah (laughs) you're ready (laughs) uh yeah, uh, you guys can catch Stranger Lands on any podcast app. Are you guys on Spotify? Oh, uh, we are not on Spotify. Uh, wait, neither. Uh, neither are we. No, yeah. we're not. We are not. So any podcast app, just look up Stranger Lands. Uh, you guys release every Friday? Uh, every Tuesday we release. Tuesday. Every other Friday we record. Okay. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Stranger Lands. And we also have a website, thestrangerlands.com, where you can um, browse our shop called The Sharp Dresser. Uh, that is a canonical shop where we get our gear in game, uh, <laughs> but it has a whole bunch of awesome designs and logos you can put on T-shirts, notebooks, coffee mugs. I mean, sky's the limit. Um, 
there's also a section there where you can uh, submit what we could. We do a thing called Strange Questions. At the end of every episode, we answer a fan question. It can be about anything, about the show, personal question for us. We'll answer it. Uh, so you can submit one there or email it to us at thestrangerlands.com. And we also have a Discord server called Tiefling Tales, which you can get to through our website as well. Awesome. Very good. And can we find you on Twitter? Do you want to drop that as well? Or Yes, you can find me on Twitter at Tigerius87. It's T-I-G-U-R-I-A-S-8-7. Okay, cool. And uh, Jambo, if I wanted to uh, find you. I know that we're live, but this is for yeah. the uh, the iPhone crowd. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah they, they, um, TLB underscore J-A-Y-M-I-L on uh, Instagram. And uh, that's it for me. <laughs> I'm uh, at Pete O'Donohue on Twitter. I do all the artwork uh, for the Lore Boys at theloreboys.com and on our Instagram, which is uh, Lore Boys Podcast. Um, also, if you want to download the 1080p versions of all of my artwork, it is on O'Manohue on DeviantArt. Uh, two silent letters and all of those things because, whatever, you got to earn my attention. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try them all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> try, every, try every letter. One of them's got to work. And Ethan. Yes. What, what can I do for you, Peter? What's going on? Where are you on the internet? Oh, right, right, right. Uh, I'm at Ethan the Dead Man. Uh, find me on Twitter. That's the best place for me. We're at theloreboys.com. That's where I post the episodes and your artwork. Yep. Uh, uh, leave Stranger Lands a review, definitely. Leave uh, Stranger Lands a review. Leave us a review. Leave us a review as well. Lands. Yes, leave these uh, awesome good guys a review. Yeah. They're amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Even if you've just heard this episode of the Lore Boys, uh, I think Trav did a good enough job for you to leave a review on the Stranger Lands podcast. Yeah, five stars okay. was good on other show. We'll listen and change review later. Yeah, listen, I yes. won't, I won't, I won't <laughs> tell the cops on you. I'm not gonna rat you out. I'm not gonna be like, I'm not gonna be like Silverpaw, be a, a total narc, some and, fucking and snitch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and if you want to support us financially, um, don't do it. Give to charity because yes. we're streaming for Extra Life right now. And if you're listening to this on Wednesday or at some future date, uh, look up a charity near you and give five bucks to them. No Lore Boys Prime this week. No goof. Anyway. Yeah. No jokes. And that constitutes a Lore Boys. Lore Boys. Is- oh. Oh. Thank you so much, Thanks, man. Thank you. All right, that's a podcast. <laughs>